Hey there guys, my name's Mikey, welcome back to my room, it's time for another tutorial! And today we're going to be learning how to draw noses for your anime and manga characters. But as well as that, we're also going to be taking a look at a slightly more realistic nose and the basic shapes that we can use to build that up. And then kind of compare that really to understand when we use very simple lines in anime and manga, uh, what are they trying to represent for a realistic human nose? So, really quick side story. As most of you guys are probably aware, um, I've already done a tutorial on mapping the face, i.e. where do you put the nose on a face, how do you get that curve of the nose at different angles and things like that. And I've also done a tutorial on how to draw a face from front, side and three quarter views. So hopefully there's links appearing on screen as that happens. And right now I'm just doing two really rough, really horrible looking faces because I just want to talk really quickly about um, more eastern versus more western noses. In anime and manga, a lot of the time a nose is indicated with a vertical line like that. And then sometimes in order to give the idea that something is pointing up towards us as a surface area, you get a little bit of something on the side, maybe something like that. And the idea is it's trying to show that it's casting a shadow or it's trying to show that there's just a different plane of surface on a face. Whereas when it comes to cartoons of a slightly more Western style, it's usually a cross that things are used to indicate stuff, i.e. perhaps just the underside edge of the nose, underside part of the nostrils, maybe a few lines on the top. So when it comes to the difference between anime and more Western cartoons, as well as the eyes, because anime eyes are pretty much impossible to miss, I think the main difference tends to be the nose. And when it comes to the characteristics of somebody in real life, a lot of that comes inside of the nose itself. So that when you want to draw a cartoon version of a person, you can usually get away with it. But if you want to draw an anime version of a real person, sometimes it can be very difficult to make it look like them. And that's because you're simplifying the nose, which removes a lot of the characteristics of the face. But really that's just something that was on my mind that I wanted to talk about. In this particular example today, guys, I'm actually going to start with probably the most complex version and then finish with a very simple anime version. But there is going to be a method to the madness. We need to take a look at the nose and how things are broken down. So if you look at things side on, uh, often with a nose in anime and manga, you get the uh, top of the nose itself, which is the dorsum. And often you get to see a little bit of the underside of the nose as well, which has got a name which I think is the columella or something like that, the columella. Let's say columella. Uh, and basically when that thing is pointing towards you, there might be a little bit of shadow or shape or description to the side as well. Now, the nose is a bit more complex than that, but this, oh, let's get that back. This triangular shape, is something that you do still want to keep in mind regardless. Now I'm going to go and try to work very large and very dark just so that hopefully it's going to be very clear but we're only going to have a few examples today so this isn't going to be the longest tutorial in the world. If we imagine that you've got your face I want you to imagine a triangular shape which is going to be the area of the nose. So I might come right down here like so for this particular example of a nose. So we'll say that's the dorsum, the top edge. And then I'm going to perhaps have this, um, not straight on towards us, but level towards us. So we'll have maybe the bottom part of the nose here, something like so. But also you get to see the columella, the underside. So if I imagine that this is going to be a pyramid shape that points out towards us, I'm gonna join up this side. And again, I'm working very large, but also much rougher and heavier with the construction lines than normal. And this probably isn't going to win any awards for looking amazing, but the whole point is let's talk about these basic structures. Because again, I've done all sorts of things about noses and where they sit in other tutorials before. Let's not cover old ground, let's talk about some important things. Now the underside of the nose is a very similar setup, but just much, much, much more compacted underneath. So I'm going to mirror my way back to about here. Oh, excuse me and then join that up on this side here and this side here as well. And then before we turn this into a nose, because you can kind of get a feel for 
the basic shape that we're trying to describe, let's have another one at a slightly different angle. We're going to go lower in. So for a lower angle nose, I'm going to imagine that uh, we're going to be looking over here. Let's go something like this. And then we're going to perhaps see it more from the underside. So this point, so to speak, is going to come up here, perhaps, and then also down here, something like so. And just like we've got these areas here, I'm going to have to now bring in the underside of this nose to kind of keep everything as a three-dimensional structure. And again, just join all of that together like so. Nice and big, nice and simple. But hopefully you can get a little bit of an idea just from this. If you imagine that when you actually draw the nose in in anime and manga, you're really only using this line here, the outer edge, and this line here, and perhaps under there. But really there's all sorts of things going on in this area. So when I have a rough idea of where I want the nose to be in that sense, I tend to go ahead and represent the front end by drawing in a sphere. So I'm going to go ahead and make that relatively large, like this, and darken it out a bit so that you guys can see. And sometimes, because it's even more complex than that, guys, sometimes instead of a sphere, some people like to think of the top as a bit of a heart shape, dipping down like that, because actually the tip of your nose is split into two sections, but let's not worry too much there. Now, when it comes to the dorsum or the overall top part of the nose, that's not a point either. That's actually a bit more of a flat surface. So you can represent that by making it a little bit more of a plane or a kind of a rectangular shape that follows back up towards the top. And then the areas to the side that sweep down, these are the uh, septal cartilage areas, I think. But really, we're just going to call them the sides of the nose for now. Now, as for the nostrils, I usually imagine that this is the middle of a bow tie and that the nostrils are just going to flare up and out like this and also on this side but more compacted here. But then they're going to follow the shape of this triangle down here and down here just like that before everything sweeps under. And it's these zones underneath which tend to be where the nostrils themselves are housed. And then remember this area in the underside for columella as well that's got a little bit of area to it a bit of thickness but I usually just draw that actually as a bit more of a, a cylinder shape and get that curve in so if you imagine there's going to be a nostril around about here like so and that might be quite an area of darkness so I'm just going to map that in there and then if you just fit another one in around about here so using these triangular shapes that we've created to very loosely get an idea for them but the far nostril we're barely going to catch anything of I'm going to darken them out just like that and just like this just like so and then again now we can actually start to firm up some of these lines down the side now the top part of the nose might actually be sweeping off and out to kind of become part of a brow line somewhere up there and I'm going to come back to that as well in just a moment so I'm going to put a little bit of shade in here to indicate that's going over to sort of um, the eye zone in general and as we come down on here uh, there are loads of different noses throughout the world as you'll know looking at people's faces loads of different sh uh, shapes and sizes this is just a general example but that triangle although it might come in many different forms and shapes is still going to apply as a rule regardless of what type of nose you want to draw on a character so in we go you might have some really pointed ones for example down here and this plane here does actually bulge ever so slightly towards the middle than it does. It tapers back towards the end. So as I come down here this line, I'm actually going to come out a little bit and allow that line just to thicken up with some weight as I just apply a bit more of a pencil as it sweeps down towards a circle. So just like this. And then over on this side here, we might start to think, okay, I'm going to get the outside edge of this nostril here. And that's probably going to curve in a little bit here. So I'm just going to darken up on this area and this area here. And this part is meeting up, but not necessarily joining to the front of the nose. 
which still describes as a line past there. And then on this side, we've got a very similar thing. I'm going to usually not fill in this particular part here or this particular part here when it comes to actually drawing the nose. They're more of our guiding lines, but I am still going to get this edge around about here coming up and in. Just take the edge off of all of the corners really. Sweep up back and in like so. And then it's a case of the underside here being a much darker line just to show that this is the most prominent area that's kind of sticking out on things. And that's the line that kind of goes around the tip of the nose. You'll notice I'm following the circle here more than this final point before it all meets back up here. So hopefully that looks relatively clear. It is a very, very simple example I appreciate that we're just doing today, but very important to understand what's going on in this design. And when it comes to anime and manga noses, again, let's go back to uh, this guy. And you just see a character and you just draw a nose which is like that. And maybe you get a little bit of that. Understand that what's going on here is really, it's uh, a part of this flatter edge, maybe the far edge before the uh, rest of the septum on this side slopes away at a very shallow angle. You can imagine all of this side might be in shadow on your character because of that. And then this part here, this hooking back in, all of that is the columella, the underside of the nose as it comes back into the face. But let's just get back to this really quickly. Uh, what you can do with your nostrils as well, depending on how much you do or don't like to put in, are little bits of shading areas just over these zones to kind of indicate that things are going in different directions, there's different planes of surface. But I think for this particular example, less is more, although when it comes to highlighting areas on the nose, worth really quickly mentioning, if you're imagining a circle at the front of the nose here, then the area closest to you as a viewer might be where you've got your uh, spot of highlight. So that's where I'd put a bit of white, for example, or a very bright light. And then over the top, it's not going to be on the center that I'd have a white highlight, but really this particular corner, this part of the dorsum of the nose, which is nearest to us, this might be where I'd get a little bit of light as well. So again, I do recommend look at lots of noses in real life, in cartoons and illustration, but when it's a very simplified nose like anime and manga, what is it actually trying to show you? So. That's our basic nose. Let's look again from the underside and see if this kind of construction is gonna work at a slightly more difficult angle. So again, I'm gonna pop back up here and I'm going to imagine our circle sits right at the front. And again, that needs to be relatively generous. So let's get this guy coming in like so. I'm just gonna push the paper back up here towards the middle and get that in around about here. And then if this is going to be the front area, and this is our underside, I'm gonna allow this underside part to sweep back here. Again, it is thick. So I'm just gonna join that up here. And then of course, we've got the bridge of the nose here. But remember, actually, there's a little bit of a, maybe not perfectly, but a roughly flat surface going down on this side as well and then again the nostrils. Now because of our angle here, I'm gonna come a little bit lower down on this circle before I make our way back and this time, obviously I was coming up, but because our angle's a bit lower, this might just appear a little bit as a flatter line or more level at least, before it sweeps out like so into this shape using our kind of pyramid structure as a guide. And then down on this side, all we're really seeing is the underside as that sweeps down here. But again, because I've got these zones, I kind of loosely know where these nostrils are going to be. I can imagine one is probably gonna be up here, like so, and then like this. Obviously, all part of this shape here. And depending on kind of how far up there you're looking, is gonna indicate how dark you're gonna make things. Let's just do something like this for the moment. And then up on this side, this is gonna be obviously part of the nostril here. And I'm gonna understand that as a shape that might sweep out a little bit on that side as well for a little bit of shadow here. In fact, I might just go ahead and make that all a little bit darker.
just like so, just so it's fairly clear where those nostril zones are. And again, much like round here, I'm going to start to firm up this particular part of the line sweeping in, back in towards here, also like we have here and up there. And with this part of the nose, um, you might find that you're going to end up shading this part around about here to help describe this shape. So I'm just going to put a little bit of tone on there for you guys. You might imagine that you're going to get a little bit of that around the top just to indicate the flat line goes into a different shape up there. And you'll get your darkest lines again being the underside further away from us. So this guy is going to actually follow up and maybe go even further up to this point like so. And then it's going to do the same as we go over the top. Let's get that nice and dark like this. And let's let that sweep back up towards here. So I'm going to go relatively heavy just like this. Again, slightly bumping out as much or as little as you like. And then remember um, that this area where you've got your kind of eye line over there is, I believe this is called for bridge, and that obviously pops, instead of going into the face, then pops out as it goes up towards the brow. A bit like a kind of rhomboid shape that way. But for this far edge, what I'm saying is that as you follow along the top of the nose, uh, it's actually then going to, as far as a line is concerned, sweep out to the side to join up with the eyebrow or the brow area in general. Uh, and that is something that happens a lot when you're looking from a low angle up. The line of the nose actually continues to join that eyebrow. And again, let's go back to our scrap paper here. Really quick example. Here's the underside of the nose for a character. Fantastic. We've got a little bit of nostril here, maybe a little bit of something there. Excellent. I'm having a great day. Let's sweep that nose all the way back and round. But boom, I'm going to go all the way up to some sort of fat eyebrow there for this particular character, like so. Terrible picture, but what I'm getting at is this line is actually gonna connect all the way around. You might not always draw it in, but I want you to always think about how does that work? Follow your nose with your finger, go up to the top and go off to the left and right and follow it up to your eyebrow. So again, we've got an area where, okay, maybe my highlighted area for the lows will be roughly about here, a bit near us. And maybe I might show a little bit of highlight along here again when it comes to coloring and shading. But understand that we're mapping out those basic shapes. We've got this circle, which if you want to really get into it, is split in two down the middle. That's our tip of the nose right down there. We've got that underside, which is actually relatively important to put in. Don't just focus on the top. We've got our nostril area, which you can kind of just bow out as little or as much as you like. And again, the reason I'm keeping it vague is draw lots of noses at home if you like. Play around with different examples. They're going to uh, yield loads of different results and give you loads of different character designs. And then things are going to sweep up here right over the dorsum and then follow up to the eyebrow. But those are the kind of basic shapes sitting inside this basic triangular structure. And the more you just think about a character, and maybe you could think of one that's side on with a triangular structure like this, or um, maybe there's one that's looking down, and you're actually going to see the triangular structure like that because the nose is sticking out. Regardless, you're going to be able to map those shapes in. So now we've got some slightly um, realistic or at least built up versions of noses. Let's just drop things back and talk about that anime manga style. And again, I just want to talk about this curve. So what I'm going to do is hmm, hopefully fit down in this corner um, a face. Let's get a building block circle really quickly going around about here. This I'm going to leave relatively light. I'm not going to try to make that too clear for you guys because we'll put a very loose character down here. I've got my center line sweeping down there. And again, if you are struggling with the placement of noses, we've already covered it. Check out my tutorials playlist. Let's sweep in here, just like this, and then come back maybe flat along the jaw until I come around here, just like here, and then brow across there. And again with this character, if I imagine that I've got sort of a big anime eye over on this side, 
maybe looking towards us and then another big anime eye on that side also doing its thing maybe not quite like that it'll just be a bit up on there better then for this nose here I might start down around about here I might have the underside that just pops out there with a bit of a bump and then the top very gentle for a female face as in, instead of a very pronounced one for a male face um, sweeping back this way but that line is going to actually in theory at least come all the way all the way up and also can be part of the eyebrow up here depending again on your design and what you're drawing in for a character and then of course I can have the other eyebrow something like that let's just get it in and very quickly shade that one out as well just like so down here and sweeping all the way up and then even if you want just a tiny bit of line to indicate a nostril depending on what you're doing now again we've already covered it but I'll give you a quick example of things on the side just because I know for you guys uh, that's always a bit of a trouble zone so let's have a head that's just going to be up here again this is super light I'm going to imagine the side of this face is down here just like so kind of looking down and into the page and then this zone around here where you've got the front of the head remember if this is going to be where I want the eye line of the characters to be uh, you can have that nose especially for the females really sweep out and up like this so I can go up in this way and then from the tip of the nose before I draw the rest of it in I'm going to have an imaginary line that goes back down to the tip of the chin and it's just going to help me place all of the features or the rest of things in there so out to the tip of the nose sweep down a bit over to the mouth if we have the mouth open in this character maybe they'll be shouting or something like so maybe a bit of a bump for lip actually let's have them sticking their tongue out or something something that looks just a little bit possibly suggestive because that will just bump up the views on the video and then sweep back out like so open mouth shouting character or tongue out like so bottom lip bump and then things sweep in before they bounce out ever so slightly for the chin let's just take the edge off that bit there and make sure that it sweeps out and then back up like so and then obviously neck of a character somewhere around there things going up back towards the ears let's get some teeth in and let's get a tongue out and just the other side edge of things on the mouth as well which will make nice and dark and the eyes of course as well not that you need to be told here a little bit further back not right on the edge set further back something like that we're going to sit up there and then the rest of the forehead line comes off of there so again in sweeping out up to the tip sweeping back in and the slightly more complex shapes of the mouth but again we've already been there so guys think about this when you're drawing your noses even if it's just these basic lines do understand what they're trying to show you um, I think in uh, let's just have a think things like bleach they kind of go halfway between you might have a character who's face on and you might get one side of the nose line coming down like this and then what they might do is just represent the underside of the circle just like this so this is the kind of underside edge of the circle of our nose and then they might just put in the edges of seeing the nostrils on either side here and here like that this is another way that you'll see it there's so many variations and then even they might just show a bit of shadow by just mapping the underside of that triangular shape like that and like that so if you see this on a character maybe even a few lines here that's still going to be a nose when it's mapped onto a face but you've got all these different lines it's worth looking at them and trying to make sure you understand what they're showing you this is showing us the nostrils sure this is kind of showing us the change in area where we're now looking under the nose from that circular tip that's up here this might show us that that circle stops there and there's a slight change to the surface direction and then this is kind of mapping out that zone or sort of indicating 
where the rest of that triangular shape goes back in, or even a shadow where that might sit, but by putting a simple downwards triangular shape under there, it's still indicating how much space that nose takes up. So look at lots of different manga by lots of different artists and understand their different nose styles because uh, variation is the spice of life, they say, and when it comes to noses, you've got plenty of options, guys. So. What I'm going to do is just really quickly tidy these twos up, um, but that's about it. I'll just see you guys right at the end. Okay guys, and welcome back. So yeah, I just wanted to put a little bit of a character onto this as usual here and here. Obviously the main focus is only really this zone here of that nose. Following that curve right up to the brow is gonna be a bit of a game changer. And again, understanding that because this is sticking out, maybe one side of this is gonna be in a bit more shadow than the other. And also the fact that really, although we might only show this line here and this line here, so, coming straight down over the top and then perhaps underneath, or maybe a little bit of nostril line just there and there. Really, they're describing all sorts of shape and form that's going on here. I threw just a tiny bit of shading on because it sometimes helps to just describe where it goes from the top or outer front area of a relatively curved surface. There's no hard edges here, um, but you can put an overall softer shading area just to show that it's sweeping into the part which is underneath. And then pop it in shade, and that's gonna help sell the idea of what's going on down there. So guys, as ever, I really hope you found this how to draw noses tutorial helpful. Again, I wanted to focus on the form of the nose more than just loads of different examples because uh, A, we've done that before on how to map the face. And I think it's really important to understand what's going on with these shapes really more than anything before you start using them willy nilly with your own characters. So as ever guys, I hope you like this one. It is of course a free tutorial on YouTube because I love to draw and I don't wanna hold anything back from you guys if you want to draw as well, it's close to my heart. But as ever, the only reason I'm able to make these are thanks to the patrons on Patreon. And remember, for as little as a dollar, you can get copies of all of the worksheets um, and as it goes up, there's art rewards, other variations, all sorts of things as a thank you back to you. But some of the high-enders over there are Tom KG, Richard S, Timothy B, Jamie, Natasha G, Tokiko K, Johnny T, Ken E, Amoral Muffin, Ezreal DC, Mazzino, Mad Duck, The Travelling Wolf, Joe R, Garrett C, Ryder2KX, Michael S, Trent H, Gabriel C, Raymond G, Jorgen A, Wes B, Connor M, Julio Felix O, Rob, Kamari J, Cache Commando, Grizzly, Matthew G, Simon B, Gareth, Taylor S, Mong G, L, Thomas C, Angry H, Johnny Y, Ollie, Garrett, Christian L, Minion715, ICZ, Wendell S, Zahaki, Fatness, Rombly, Kurt D, Zoe T, and LMA Gamer. Ah, quite a list of people. Thank you so much, guys, for all of the support. And again, if you want to get loads of art rewards, the worksheets, PSD files, uh, Mikey commentaries to all of the time lapse stuff that we do, go on to Patreon, take a look, because it will really help me out. Thanks again, guys. Get in the comment section to let me know what else you'd like to learn about, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.